So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Jesus Lopez Aguilera. I am one of the information specialists here at McMaster Continuing Education. Um, very much the first point of contact for any general questions or advice, assistance, or if you need help selecting a program or a course and help with creating a study plan. Um, before I begin, uh, please note that this webinar is being recorded and it's being live streamed on Facebook. The recording uh, will be posted on our website and it will also be posted on our YouTube channel if you need to rewatch it or share with friends and family. Uh, we will also be answering uh, Facebook's live questions as well. The purpose of this webinar is to give new and um, prospective students the opportunity to learn more about what can you expect from McMaster Continuing Education. Um, also for you to ask any questions that you may have. This webinar will be useful for prospective students, new students, and current uh, McMaster undergrad students or alumni who are considering uh, continuing education at McMaster uh, Continuing Education. Please note, that we will be hosting a separate international student orientation uh, next week. So if you're an international student, we encourage you to join us next week on Thursday, April 29th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And you can sign up um, via the link that's being dropped in the chat right now. All right. So our agenda will cover everything you need to know as a student. We'll walk and we'll talk about the benefits of being a continuing education student at McMaster and provide current updates on studying during COVID-19. Uh, we will cover general eligibility requirements and information you need to know to plan your studies. Most of our programs are open enrollment and you, not, you do not require a formal admission process for majority of the programs. There's some that do have some sort of admissions process, uh, but we will explain the difference uh, as well. Next, we'll walk you through the enrollment process and important steps to make sure that you're prepared for your studies. Finally, we'll go through the resources and supports that are available to you to ensure that you have a successful and rewarding experience at McMaster Continuing Education. For those looking for more detailed information about a specific program, we have program previews that highlight our programs. These are available to watch on each of the program page of our website or on our YouTube channel. So I'm gonna post another poll again uh, what are you looking to get out of today's session? And whether you're looking to learn more about the enrollment process, ask questions live, explore financial options or general knowledge. So I'll be posting this right now. All right, so welcome to McMaster Continuing Education, MCE. Uh, McMaster Continuing Education has inspired people to discover and achieve through lifelong learning since 1931. So we're located downtown Hamilton, Ontario in Jackson Square. Uh, we're one of the largest and leading providers of certificate diplomas, professional development programs and courses. So whether you're, you're wanting to upgrade in your current field, rescale or earn a professional designation, we make a career change. We offer flexible quality uh, online courses that will help you reach um, your specific goals. So what are the benefits of taking continuing education courses? So students value um, the industry specific expertise of our instructors and the in-demand skills and knowledge to help them get ahead of their in their career. We offer more than 200 diverse courses and workshops that blend both theoretical knowledge and practical application to help you expand 
your skill sets and advance your career. Many of our students are working professionals with families and other responsibilities trying to advance their career while juggling other demands. So to accommodate these busy schedules, our online courses are flexible and convenient and offer options to study on weeknights and weekends. Most of our programs have multiple um, start dates each year um, with online self-paced courses that will allow you um, um, your coursework to be done when it suits your schedule. Depending on the program, you could also earn credentials as quickly as four months, or you can also space out your courses and even take terms off if you need it. So McMaster University is deeply committed to supporting our community during the rapid changes uh, taking place worldwide due to COVID-19. So most of our programs have been available online long before COVID-19. Uh, for these programs, they will continue to operate in the same manner. So our online and online self-study courses are expertly designed to ensure high quality learning experience that is authentic and accessible to our learners. For our programs that traditionally were offered in person or that are in person, please note that we will not be offering any in-person courses this spring of 2021 term due to COVID-19. Many of the in-person courses will be offered in virtual classroom or VC format. A virtual classroom format provides students with the opportunity to meet online with an, with an instructor and as well with your peers and attend a live class session during a scheduled class day and time listed on the schedule. Uh, future offerings of in-person courses are yet to be determined. Uh, please visit our COVID FAQ page on our website for the latest information. For those who are starting the accounting program, um, all courses, um, the exams will be administered using a, or an online uh, proctoring service. Your exam can be completed uh, from the safety and comfort of your home. Um, staff from the accounting program will definitely get, provide you that information and all those specific details once you start your course. So formats. We offer three learning format options to accommodate your schedule and prefer learning styles. So virtual classroom, online classroom environment, Classes are held on a scheduled day and time each week and combination and uses a combination of both real time sessions and independent learning activities. The online uh, has weekly readings, videos, discussion boards, uh, groups and individual assignments. There's no weekly interaction, although there is um, not live but there is weekly interaction with your instructor and peers through discussions, for example, but you're not logging in at a specific time. So there's no live component to the online format. The online self-study, um, only very few uh, programs use the online self-study format, for example, the accounting program. So with online self-study, you work through the course materials on your own pace uh, within an allotted time frame, um, assignments due on a specific um, days throughout the duration of the course. So you have some assignments due, um, but you can also fast track through them. Um, and there's no need to log in on a specific day or time or anything like that. All right, let's see. I went to the wrong one. There it is. Okay. So. If you're planning to register or have already registered for your first course, um, there are a few factors to consider when you create your uh, study plan. Uh, we recommend that you spend some time reviewing the program specific pages for guidance um, about program requirements, course selections, schedules and fees, 
instructors, and more. Current and past course outlines are available online and are, are a great way to see uh, what topics are covered in a course, potential assignments, potential readings, and more. Course outlines may change between terms, but um, documents provide a good overview of the course uh, and its expectations as well. So reviewing the course outline will help you plan your time as you can see how much time you need to um, be present for live classes, for example, along with planning time to complete course activities uh, such as reading, studying for quizzes, tests, and completing projects and assignments. Scheduling an additional three to six hours per week um, in addition to a speci specified class time and content hours is a good estimate to plan your availability. Next, you want to consider your availability in terms of having adequate time to devote to your studies. Some considerations are, are you currently employed full-time or part-time? Do you have any children, family commitments, or a busy lifestyle outside of work? How many hours do you have available each week uh, to commit to your studies? Um, how quickly do you want to get through the program? So those are a few things to consider. If you're working full-time, we generally do not recommend that you take more than one uh, to two courses at a time. If you have never taken post-secondary education courses previously, or if you're new to online learning, or it has been a long time since you have attended school, then I will suggest starting with just one course to see how you can handle one course load along with your current responsibilities. So you can always add uh, courses to your schedule as you go. If you're fine, if you're working part-time, you may want to consider two or three courses. Uh, finally, if you're not working or have a full, and you have a lot of time and full-time availability, you can take three to five courses per term. So information specialists such as myself, my colleague Carly, um, are happy to discuss your specific situation with you and provide you with further guidance. So let's move here. All right, so registering for programs is actually quick and easy. Most of the programs, as I mentioned earlier, are open enrollment. This means that there's no formal application or admissions process. And you will simply review any specific program prerequisites on the page. And if you meet these requirements, you can just register online. You do not need to submit any documentation for open enrollment programs. Um, a few health programs uh, we offer, such as health informatics, nursing concepts and continence care, and the professional addictions uh, studies, those programs do require an application. For these programs, there are specific admissions requirements and an online application is required. You can visit the specific uh, program page uh, on our website to view admission requirements and the list of documents that you will need to submit. Uh, for these programs, you will apply and wait for acceptance and then you can enroll once you have been accepted to those programs. So the registration criteria that you see there on your screen for the majority of the master continuing education programs is that you must have an Ontario secondary school diploma or equivalent, or you can be a mature student. So a mature student is anyone over the age of 18 who has attended um, secondary school or college on a full-time basis um, or at least two years and or never attend a university. So that could be a mature student. Uh, there, you can also be deemed an exceptional case and this is done through the program managers and the admission staff. And please ensure that you meet the McMaster's English language proficiency requirements. If you are a new Canadian or an international student, you can refer to the continuing education page 
uh, um, just for more information, you will see that there are exceptions to this policy as well. For example, if you lived in an English speaking country for the past four years, then you don't need to provide an English language proficiency. All right. So the registration process. So I want to take you to our website to walk you through the online registration process. So continuing courses are offered three terms per year. So we have the fall, we have the winter, and the spring term. So let me just go on. And then let me share. Our website. Here, okay. So, if I'm just gonna select a program, for example, and um, it's the first one here is accounting. So we have the fall, the winter, and the spring, as you can see on your screen there. And so we do stagger some of our courses start dates. So you may end up taking a course that starts in the middle of the term. And, and it goes into the middle of the following term, as you can see here with accounting. So here it, it goes from September all the way to September to February 15th. So that's, that's an example of that, a course starting in the middle of the fall, ending in the middle of the winter. But again, you can accelerate through this because this one is an online self-study course. But before you register, you might want to review the schedules and fees page like this one. Um, and then um, confirm that the course is available and the dates on, your, on this page is your schedule before you register. Um, if any change are made to the courses that you register, which is very rare, uh, you will receive a notification uh, via email. So steps to enroll are pretty easy. So most of the program pages do have this enroll now button here, so all you have to do is click Enroll Now. So I'm gonna click there and you can do a quick course search. Um, so for example, let's do uh, business administration. So for program, I'll select business administration. Then I'll select a program plan. Normally, I like to click on the business administration diploma here at the bottom because it will display all the courses under this program. So I'll click here and I'll leave everything else blank. And I click on the go button and there it is. You can see all the courses that are available. Um, so for example, winter, fall, um, and spring. Let's say I wanna take this coming spring, the, let's see, Business Foundations Online Virtual Classroom then what I'll do is that, okay, check that this is the correct course, look at the class schedule because it's a virtual classroom course. And it will tell you here in the notes that this, some courses actually are held live. Um, so, and all that. Once you make sure that this is the right course for you, you click select. And then once you're ready, um, you can check out. If you want to add another course, you can go to return to the search page and then I could just uh, select another course. Uh, check here, this one, for example. So this was business communication. This one's online, so there's no set and time for this one. Um, so I will just select one. So I have two courses here. Um, once you are sure that these are the ones you want to take, you click checkout, and it will direct you to another page. Um, in this other page, if you are a continuing student, you can select Mac ID login. Uh, you can select your student number if you have that. If you've never been to McMaster at all, meaning undergrad, graduate, or anything like that, then you can select me to McMaster. And there's also the search match login as well uh, for those who are who, who receive the search match option if you're registering as a new student. Um, so yeah, and then just continue. Um, and then I'm just gonna select new to McMaster here so you can see what it looks like. Um, I will normally tell students just to fill anything with the star or the asterisk here uh, next to the, um, the options and you can just leave everything blank and then continue. 
um, you will be asked for a few extra information. And then towards the end, you will be asked to provide payment. Once you've made payment, you will receive a receipt via email and you will be registered. And that's it, it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, next we will be talking about budgeting. So course fees are paid at the point of registration as I just recently mentioned. So it will be the last step after going through the whole billing information. All fees are posted on the program uh, web pages. So on the page on the schedules and, fee and fees page, you can see the cost per course. Course fees include tuition fee and they also include the McMaster Association of part-time student fee for academic credit courses only. So those courses that are academic. If you are an Ontario resident, please know that our programs are not eligible for OSAP, sadly. Um, so no OSAP uh, funding for our courses, regrettably. So you will want to keep a budget in mind as you plan your studies. And this could deter determine how many courses you may register for each term. Overall, there are a few options students can, um, I guess, explore if financial assistance is required. So if you are working, many employers offer what they call a tuition assistance program. And you can ask your manager or even the HR department, see if your company offers anything like this. Um, a, a lot of um, Employers offer these and many no, don't even know about it. So you may want to check uh, for that as well. Uh, the MAPS or MAPS or the McMaster Association for Part-Time Students offers a limited number of bursaries for students who can demonstrate financial needs or difficulties. So students must pay upfront uh, for the course or courses and then apply for the bursary through their Mosaic Student Center portal during the time frame indicated on the bursary information page. I will tell you more about the Mosaic system later in this presentation. If you have, if you select the, the for the bursary, the funds then will be applied to your student account, and this is something that you can apply for each term if you're taking two courses or less. Applications only open for a short time, a few weeks prior to the new term. So it's important that you visit um, the link that you can see on your screen right now. Um, it will also be dropped on the chat. So let me just, um, you can see here, uh, maps, sorry which is maps.macmaster.ca slash bursaries, um, if you're interested in that option. So um, a lot of banks as well, they do offer student loans and lines of credits that are attractive um, because they have like maybe lower interest rates, attractive interest rates. So you may only require to pay interest after completion of your program. So you may wanna check that as well. For Canadian students interested in government funding or subsidized training options, for example, Second Career Canada Ontario Job Grant, please contact your local employment service center. Uh, there's Access Community Capital Fund. It's a charitable Toronto-based organization which offers uh, people in the greater Toronto and Hamilton area, the GTHA, low interest loans for to internationally trained individuals interested in upgrading their skills or starting up a business in Canada. There's also windmill micro lending supports to newcomers who arrive with education, skills and experience, but face significant barriers to employment for many immigrants, um, what prevents them from entering the labor market is lack of financial support. So Windmill offers low interest affordable career loans up to 15,000 to help skilled immigrants and refugees to pay for cost of education and training programs, credentials, licensing, and more to reach their career goals. 
Uh, for more information, please visit the newcomer information page on our website. Um, so if you go to our website, it will be under mcmastercc.ca slash newcomer dash information. So it is important to know that the fees for academic credits, um, these are eligible for a tax credit on your income tax return. So tax certificates are issued in February for previous calendar years. So fees for non-credit, so non-credit courses such as professional development courses, unfortunately those are not eligible for, for tax certificates. If you have any specific questions, please uh, do not hesitate to reach us out and we can assist you on our website chat or reach us through the contacts form and we can definitely uh, assist you further with any financial uh, questions. So next, I did mention Mosaic earlier um, on the last few slides. So let's talk and take a look at Mosaic. So Mosaic is our administrative information system. This is where you will see alerts um, from the university, you can access your payment information, your final grades, and, uh, transcript request, and many more. So Mosaic, um, yeah, so if you want to request a transcript, you can do it through there. Uh, if you want to check your final grades as well, if you need letters. Um, so anything admin will be through Mosaic. Um, so you can enter Mosaic with your MAC ID and your password, which will be issued if you're a new student right after you enroll for your first course. Um, and then those who are continuing, um, you can just use your MAC ID and password to access Mosaic. Um, so that's Mosaic. And that's where you also apply for the MAPS bursary, which I mentioned earlier as well. And there, there will be an option to apply for that uh, through that system. Now, Avenue to Learn. Avenue to Learn, it's the McMaster Learning Management System for online and virtual courses. So you will be using this system regularly, pretty much all the time during your studies as, uh, as this is where your course content will be housed. So, so some of the programs um, that you may use um, in your course, uh, may use WebEx as well or Zoom for live sessions if applicable. Um, and the Microsoft 365 allows you to use chat messaging called Teams. So there's Teams as well uh, as, as well available for um, these courses. So you will be provided to the uh, instructions to this system um, once your once your courses uh, begin. All right. So I want to take a minute and discuss a few online learning strategies. Uh, to help you set uh, you up for success with your online studies. So online learning tips are, um, so navigate Avenue to Learn and explore the ins and outs of the system. So if you have any questions, you're always welcome to ask us questions. You always encourage to reach out for support um, about the system so you can definitely send us a message uh, on our website through the contact us page and me and my colleague will be more than happy to assist you with that as well. We also have our university technology services team if you have any questions or any technical issues as well. Uh, you can also review and get familiar with the course outline and the schedule. So this way you better understand what the course entails and you can also take notes of the deadlines. So that's another uh, learning tip. So another one is give some thought of how you will manage your time um, in the way that works best for you. So whether you're working part-time or working full-time, have family care priorities or other life commitments. So block off some time to um, in your weekly schedule to complete the required course work and attend your virtual classroom meetings. We encourage you to set up dedicated study space as well. It is important that you are comfortable and in a physical space to study. 
So with uh, any professional setting, there are online etiquettes, best practices for interacting with your classmates and instructors. So ensure that you're always being respectful uh, when engaging with other McMaster continuing education uh, students and peers. So some online learning myths are, let's debunk some of these myths and, 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 and discuss them. Um, so I will not have any support online. Um, I am one of the team information specialists here at McMaster Continuing Education. So we're the first line of support to our students and community. So if you have a questions, we have an answer. So our goal is to help you succeed. So every program has a program manager, they have program associates and instructors that are there to field your questions uh, to get you on track to graduation. So there's a huge network of support. Um, and I also mention your, your students, and your peers as well. The next myth is the quality of online courses is not the same as in-person courses. Uh, before COVID-19, over 80% of our programs and courses uh, were already offered online. So the transition for our in-person courses was made easy by um, the foundation that we had set uh, from before. So we have an instructional design team that creates and rigorously tests all of our courses to ensure that we continue in providing the best in-class education while accommodating your uh, learning needs. The other myth is I will not have a chance to network with my peers. So between our courses with virtual classroom setting, um, discussions and chat functions, you're able to connect with your instructors and your fellow students as well with ease. So once you begin uh, your course, your first point of contact for assistance to your course will be your instructor. So they can always be reached through Avenue to Learn. And I explained earlier Avenue to Learn. So that's the system where you access your course. So there's um, uh, a space there where you can actually um, get in touch with your instructor once you have access to your course. If you're having any difficulties with the Mac ID login, um, please visit our Mac ID help page by clicking Current Students. Um, so the current students tab on our website and, and then you can find all kind of helps there as well or, and if you have any questions about any specifics. Uh, there's also our university technology services uh, team that will be more than happy to assist you in resolving any issue. If you do not see your course by the start date on Avenue to Learn, please ensure that you contact uh, the information specialist team at Continuing Education. I will ensure that the program department adds you to your course or we can troubleshoot what's going on um, and we can just um, set you up on the learning management system. If you're experiencing any other technical difficulties with Avenue to Learn, you will find the contact information for Avenue to Learn support desk on the Avenue to Learn login page. So you can always select that as well if you're having some issues uh, and need some troubleshooting help. So for any questions and assistance, please feel free to reach the continuing education information specialist team. Uh, we are happy to be the, the first point of contact and provide you with direct message and assistance and direct you to the most appropriate staff member or even department. All right, so, um, so yeah, uh, I will, if you have questions, please um, use the contact us page and we'll be more than happy to um, answer more questions. So thank you for joining us today. We, we, we love to know if this webinar was actually helpful to you. So please complete the quick survey. A link is being shared on the chat right now. And just let us know your feedback so we can continue to provide valuable information and content for, for current and prospective students. So that will be helpful for us. So for additional information, uh, please visit our website. 
Uh, for more program details, instructors, um, schedules, course descriptions, and registration details. And if you have any questions, please contact the McMaster Continuing Education via the Contact Us page that you're seeing right now there on, on the screen through the website mcmastercc.ca or for the Contact Us page, mcmastercc.ca slash contact us. Um, so we'll be more than happy to assist you through there. So thank you again, everybody, and have a wonderful day.